Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, and welcome to The Brian Diaries, where my pals and I get together and talk about subjects dealing with our favorite tabletop role-playing setting, The World of Darkness. While we may not be subject matter experts on the game lines, we have a passion that has led us to create and share actual plays with you all. Eventually we thought, well shit, we might as well take a stab at a podcast, and here you go. Each episode we will have a guest content creator to join us to talk about whatever subject is on the table. If you'd like to contact us, you can reach out to us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM or on Facebook at Twin Cities by Night. So here we go. I hope you enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Diaries, the unofficially sponsored by Cold Brew and Black Sabbath Rift podcast, the two things that are darker than the world of darkness. My name's Chris. Fucking <laughs> 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 cold what? brew, man. Yeah, got to have the cold brew. We, we've already said unofficial sponsor, cold brew and Black Sabbath riffs. Today, I have a co-host. You guys may know him from some of our games. He was on our second year birthday bash, Brian Diaries, but we really didn't do an introduction. I'm joined today by Andrew. What's up, Andrew? Hello, hello. So I thought, you know, since we really didn't do, like I said, an official intro on that birthday bash, and it was just us all hopped up on beer and cold brew, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your history in gaming, and like and like your history with our group for people who may have not checked out our games. So I've, oh, it's been like a year since I started playing with you guys, right? Um, yeah. I've played in the, you know, the, the World of Darkness uh, Ultimate Evil game. That's kind of where I started uh, on the channel, but, uh, you know, we had been uh, talking a long time before that and uh you know i've played in the the victorian age vampire game uh that quinn ran uh or keen uh then uh now i'm in the twin cities by night game that you're running the the third arc and uh you know i do a lot of uh, world of darkness gaming with my own local group as well that i'm mostly just storytelling games uh and i think i'm actually going to be starting uh a new one there too. Uh, so I have like a bunch of gaming projects going on all at once, and we'll be running. I'll be running uh, one on the TCBN channel too for Hunters Hunted Two, uh, doing like a chronicle set in uh, Washington D.C. in the uh, mid 2000s. Yeah, definitely. Andrew's one of those people. Uh, when we were in like our first year, even earlier on, when when we were just sharing one. The Twin Cities by Night, the first two story arcs. Andrew was the guy who would comment on videos and kind of like be honest with his critique about stuff. Because for people who may not know, the probably the hardest thing to get when you're a content creator, period, is like comments or reviews or like opinions about your stuff, you know, like where people are actually verbalized and articulate it. And so Andrew was one of those people, you know, and then eventually Andrew came to the White Wolf Media gameplay facebook group that we run and you know he'd be commenting on people's posts and he was very interactive so when we when um slavic and i who were the original original two mods wanted to kind of like expand and get more mods because the group was growing andrew was of course on the top of the list and he 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 jumped in there and i remember when we first ran world of darkness ultimate evil and mitch slavic and i thought it'd be cool to see if any other outside players wanted to get in on it we we sent out like we we do this thing where we send out a questionnaire to people who are interested or whatever, and I kind of <laughs> this is what I love about Andrew. I kind of was like stomp stomp wink wink yeah you'll be considered. Really trying to tell him like you're a shoe in for the game, and Andrew's like no fuck that. I don't want to be treated any differently than anyone else, and I want like the same vote to happen. And I was like oh, and I was really impressed by that, and I thought that spoke volumes about his character. So yeah, he's been part of the group for a while now. He's about to run his own game, so he's kind of like the guy who. Uh, balances me out in our group and knows like the right things to say like when if i go down a rabbit hole or whatever so i appreciate him coming here and the one of the main reasons why and this is a good segue andrew wanted to be on here is because andrew is a huge fan of the content that uh is produced by our guest today cosnark from the st spira gang or crew what's up cosnark hey what's going on guys uh awesome little impressive resumes you guys got going on yeah i'm the um production guy on my side of course my lovely wife storyteller spear she's the talented one i just you know try not to screw up the editing too much (laughs) (laughs) 
That's, um, I think it's totally amazing you get to play with your wife too. By the way, like seriously, I try to. My wife has it now to where I can talk about that. I play a game, but she still rolls her eyes every time I try to get into any kind of details. But she's getting there. But that is very commendable and awesome to hear that. Oh yeah, no, she she taught me. Um, I playing with her was the first time I ever played a role playing game in my life. Um, I didn't do much of that. I was much more into like WoW and stuff in middle school, high school, that kind of thing. She was the one who's, you know, been into World of Darkness since a small child. Um, she's the one who introduced me to it and got me into all this. She did the uh, Philly by Night, of course, before the current games that we run. But uh, yeah, she she pulled me in because she was tired of me not being able to talk with her about her games and stuff. So she's like, that's it. You're doing this. And here we are. Nice. So yeah, you you mentioned that you guys started with Philly by Night. I remember when that hit the scene. That was around the time that that we started Twin Cities by Night when that happened. But then you guys segued into uh, other games, right? What are some of those other games that you guys run? So we run, uh, we just uh, Storyteller Spear is just the the collective name we do for all the different games that we run. Um, we did New York by Night, which was our longest lasting game. It's a bit of a hiatus right now. Um, just because we did that for a little over a year, many, many episodes, lots of hours, and we want to take a break. Right now we're doing New Orleans by night. Um, Got to love all the by nights, though. <laughs> but we're doing <laughs> New Orleans by night, which is uh, us playing, you know, Vampires in New Orleans, and the channel's recently expanded out to doing some um, D&D by the awesome Zibani, who's a D&D pro um, been doing it for a long time so he story tells that on fridays tuesdays is storyteller spear doing her job and uh, doing vampires and i believe we're gonna have revolver c coming back here soon who's another uh, twitch streamer storyteller awesome guy starting up a new vampire game in the next couple weeks i'm not sure what the setting is i haven't been able to keep up recently but we're, we're always going for more games we aim for three a week uh usually monday tuesday friday but they change up um, from here and there. And then I do generally the production stuff for all that. So making sure getting the artwork down and correct, making the overlays, um, making sure all that stuff is working out good. And you also have a Hunter's game too that was ran, right? We uh, Hunter oh, yeah. the Reckoning game? Yeah, we did a Hunter the Reckoning, which is on YouTube. Uh, we're probably going to be revisiting those. And then uh, Modi answers, who is a regular in our games. Um, he's, flirting with and we're trying to convince him to do it a demon game as well demon the fallen nice oh, nice cool. yeah you don't see too many demon the fallen like actual plays out there you know i think i've only seen like one other one that was a couple years ago two or three years ago you know so that's pretty cool that, that i think that a lot of people would love to consume that i know adam who is a, a part of our group loves the hunter game that you guys ran you know what i mean like like has nothing but good things to say about it uh talk he told talked about a scene in a park where people were eating drinking beer and eating kfc while they're trying to figure out what was going on and and that, <laughs> yeah. that, that's that's really awesome to hear about scenes like that i actually uh i loved your the way uh for those who don't know you play obviously play in a lot of these games and you played in new york by night and i was like dude the way you do a kid's voice is just like spot on man i was like very impressed by how you did a child's voice in there yeah i mean i've, I've got kind of the the light end of the voice spectrum anyway i'm not going to impress anyone with uh we already have chard if anyone <laughs> knows him or super chocolate bear and he's got those he's got those deep tones Bear's down down. I'm not going to try to compete. So I figured I'll lean into being a higher pitched guy and we'll do the children thing. Cause I figured I can do that voice. I'm terrible at accents, like really am. So I was trying to figure out something I could do to, you know, not just be my normal standard voice. And I thought that'll, that'll be awesome. And then Ike does have that really fun uh, child and he's older. So, you know, 50s sort of male kid voice that he does and then can switch into, you know, my normal voice, which is his like deep, him trying to be commanding but since i don't have a very commanding voice to start with it comes off as kind of funny i, I enjoy it yeah child vampires are creepy period and trust me brother I'm, i have the same affliction where i can't do accents to save my life i try to do some but yeah i feel like a I feel like a clown whenever i try to use them one thing that i really like about too about your 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 guys's group is that it seems very um um multifunctional like you have people who do different roles like you have elvish dame who does your guys artwork who kind of like you know pushes that out i know she does like a lot like your banner and, and like like the different thumbnails that you have got guys have had on youtube and um then you have someone who handles like certain aspects of social media like reddit and twitter then you guys have someone who does like the shares on facebook and like you do the editing so i think that's really cool it's like a co coalition of like you know different people fit in different roles man so um 
yeah, it's awesome. And it shows you guys have like a huge fan base and, and that's really rad, man. And um, I creep on your guys' Discord. So I get to like see the announcements of new stuff and I'm excited to see what kind of vampire you guys, games you guys are running on Monday. I saw the, I saw the announcement, man. Definitely. Yeah, a little bit of a teaser there. Got to gotta get that build up for it. And it's always nice to have different storytellers because everyone's got their own their own bend on how to do it, their own flow, their own pacing. And uh, I think our we, we tried to do a demon game a while back. And Storyteller Spear has her very clear way that she she runs games. And Modi Ensus was trying to replicate that for his game. And he was really stressed out storytelling. And he he ended up cutting our first demon game. But we came to the realization it's because he's trying to do it her way. And you really, you can do it at different paces. You can have different structures. Uh, Spira doesn't do much block text at all in her games. Most of that all comes up off the top of her head. Or she's got an idea worked out. But there's nothing written down. Um, it's kind of funny, you know, sitting next to her when she's, you know, running the ship, captaining the ship. There's a scary lack of notes <laughs> going on some days, and she just pulls it off every time. She's got it all in her head. It's great. Not everyone can do that, though. So um, that's why it's nice to have those guest storytellers and to check everyone else out and see how they do it. There's a bunch of different styles for storytelling. Everyone has their own way of doing it. Uh, you can even see it in some of our content on YouTube with the way Adam and what well, Joaquin both uh, had their own distinct method of being, you know, running a game that, that was very different from the way Chris does. And uh, it's it's really cool to see that your own, your group as well has like that all, everyone has their own style. And it'll be really interesting to see what he brings to the table if he decides to run that after all. I'm pretty sure we got him sold on it. I wouldn't have said any. I'm saying something just so I can point him in this direction and put the pressure <laughs> on, you know? Like, hey, like hey, hey, out of the bag, get working. <laughs> it's in the interwebs that has to happen now. <laughs> yeah. Don't make a liar out of me, Modi. <laughs> yeah, no pressure, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, different people have their different styles. And yeah, like that's the same thing with our group where, yeah, you know, you can't like try to fit into someone's mold. I, you know, if anything, just look at something you like that they do and maybe try to tweak that and add it to your style, you know? But yeah, there's so many different, different ways of storytelling and really trying to like trap yourself in one box of it. You know what I mean? It's just, if it's not, concurrent to what you like to do you know what i mean you're just gonna yeah. stress yourself out you know and it also it's down to what you value in your role-playing game so storyteller spear obviously loves the role-playing aspect of role-playing we're kind of roll head roll light most of the time fights are rare but fun when they happen um but we do our like the the storyteller spear and i sort of style is the, the radio style where we don't we try not to get caught up on details we don't argue rules on air we don't talk over each other and there's very little cross talk which comes up is just a much different experience than the table the actual tabletop sitting around the table chatting with friends and playing is a, is a very different experience because we don't like get interrupted very often people get to finish whole sentences which it's just a different bend to it a different style and flavor well, yeah, I found that playing online, like, you, you know, as a group, like, we got, whatever, three hours, you know what I mean? And we got three one-hour b- sessions, I guess, before a break. And, yeah, you learn when you play online, you want to get the ma- maximum time playing that you can, you know what I mean, out of there. And, yeah, I, I, I really dig that, like, the roll light kind of mentality. You know, you don't want to waste too much time going down that rabbit hole because before you know it, 30 minutes is gone with arguing and opening books and trying to, you know what I mean, find mm-hmm. an answer. And, and I played in the tabletop game recently. Where I felt like it really took me a second to get used to that again because I was like, oh wow, we're looking up books and sitting there, and I'm just thinking that's ten minutes that's gone by, that's twenty minutes now, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Where we could be playing, so definitely. And definitely. That, and because it's all of our content is produced, um, obviously we we say at the end of every stream we wouldn't do it if we didn't have fun, but we are uh, we know we have an audience, we know there's people watching and digging through books and arguing over rules. There's definitely an audience for it, but that's not the majority of our audience. We do that in the Discord afterwards. Definitely. How does that uh, lend itself to like um, playing live? Because unlike with our games where we're recording and we have time where we can just set aside to uh, to take breaks and all that stuff, you guys have uh, you're doing all all your stuff live on Twitch as you're as you're playing and um, having to uh, have, having to have like that kind of interaction with the audience um, and uh, also with the rules and things like that. How does that all work for y'all? Generally um, we're all laid back and production minded. So everyone does their part in keeping the ship going forward, you know, keeping it on track. We'll, we'll have people who do asides um, and they, 
they'll they'll do their aside they'll go into the chat box and they'll talk to the audience and and often honestly um the audience is a huge asset to us they'll pull up a rule and they'll go hey you know look at this page or here's the rule though you know they'll copy paste it into the twitch chat about something and it may have already passed but we'll make note of that and then next time we come around to it we'll change it and do it the way the rule is supposed to be or if it's not production friendly we'll change the rule itself we'll just homebrew something um which is sort of a downside because it makes it a little difficult to follow our games from the outside because you're like what book you're using it's like well a combination of old things and new things and modified things that work for streaming and um for live audiences and then you know folding in our breaks of course which we do is we do the audience conversations during breaks a few of us stick around and we go like shifts people go away people come back and do the chatting and that's another place where like rules will really get born out or we'll argue over something or we'll say yeah that you know that's that's crap that shouldn't happen that way i should have had you or we've honestly backed off on rule arguments just because they're narratively um interesting which you know it's that's a product of the live the live nature of our games like uh, i always recall that ike got staked to a couch by um angel zabani's character um and that was a point where i went no, I don't care about the rule anymore. We stopped arguing over, you know, initiative and all that. And I said, no, I'm just going to let this happen. Cause this, and it was a beautiful scene because. Definitely. That kind of is a good segue to our next uh, se- section. After we have our first break, we'll be coming back and we'll actually be talking about Twitch. And that's why we have Mr. Cosnark here. So he can break us down to people like me, to what tri- uh, Twitch is and to people who pro- uh, potentially have never heard of it and who may be looking for a new form to run games or check out games. So stay tuned. Hello folks, have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts, or just media in general that deals with your favorite White Wolf role-playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded, one which wouldn't be drowned out by random posts and discussion so that your media could get the attention you want? Well. We have the answer for you in a Facebook group we run called Weight Wolf RPGs Gameplay and Media. The group is specifically ran with the sole intent of it being a one-stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. We are currently over 1,000 members strong, and we are continuing continuing to rapidly grow with new media being shared every day stop on by we hope to see you there all right welcome back so yeah so one common question that i get myself being a content creator all the time is are you going to go on twitch no I'm never going to go on Twitch. You don't want to know why? And I'm sure Andrew could answer it right here, but and- Andrew has answered it to people before. I get easily distracted. And then, and and by the way, that's no slight at all to people who run games on Twitch. I'm not saying I'm better, and I'm actually worse than probably the people who can run games on Twitch because one dude would say a word, and I would just be like, bird, and I'd just be distracted and trying to figure out what that person means. A little kind of funny story back way, way back when we first started, we accidentally ran one of our games on YouTube Live. It was like the third or fourth session of our, our Vampire game and someone simply logged on and said france and i swear for 15 minutes i'm like what do they mean by france what are they saying by france i'm trying to find who this person is rather than run the game so one 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 very popular thing that i've noticed uh being in the content creation scene now is seeing how many people run tabletop role-playing games on twitch now so i guess my first question for you mr Kosnark, is can you explain to us exactly what is twitch what is the meaning behind it like why do people run games on twitch like what's the big picture like when you guys started running games why did you choose twitch so um twitch obviously from the basic level is uh, online streaming content um they do have the same functionality as a lot of youtube and youtube's catching up with twitch as well but there is videos are saved and things like that but the core part is you know streaming and streaming has become a big thing in the gaming world as a whole with video games um tabletop games uh, one of the biggest twitch channels in counter roleplay um they ran on twitch and i mean for us when we were trying to decide how to do this uh, we didn't really consider uh, already edited we really liked the thrill of the, having an audience and having people there and interacting with them in in a live setting not through a comment section um 
which uh, not saying that's, you know, plus or minus for anyone. We also love our YouTube comments, but having that be ingrained into the game itself, um, it, it adds a lot of laid back and then a lot of laid back energy to everything. And then I think as far as Twitch, you know, obviously being live and um, it, it has an environment that's already very supportive of that. <clears throat> they know that um, they, they, you know what you're getting out of Twitch because we're, we're latecomers to the whole thing. Um, it was already set up. The formula was set up. How you do it was kind of there. We just added our spin to it. We didn't have to break new ground. I feel like YouTube, especially live, because we enjoy the live uh, part, is, is still growing and it's still a new thing. And people are really forging the way for that. And unfortunately, we're busy. So this this works for us. It's not too much editing. I put most of my stuff up there. Mostly raw with cutting out any bits that I have to um, changing audio settings if that needs to be done but it's it it's a, it's a great way to interact with everyone to get people involved and one of the weirdest things i say is we've talked about doing just youtube videos or running a game on just youtube and not streaming it and in a weird sort of way it, it, it keeps us all honest and it keeps us motivated on twitch because you're live and you've made this you've made this agreement that hey we're going to show up at this time and we're going to start at this date and we're going to do this for this many hours. And that keeps everyone on board. You, there's a whole lot of guilt, not, not guilt, but it, it, you do feel like you're disappointing people when you back out of a game that's supposed to be live. Cause they've also put time out of their day to sit down with us and, and share that experience. And that's, it's not something that they can do later. You know, you can watch them on YouTube, but you won't show, you won't see your comments in the YouTube video. Cause we have our Twitch chat in our videos. Um, you, you feel bad backing out and that keeps all of us, you know, even when you're having a bad day, you get that, you get that stage health, you know, you get that ability to, to suck it up for the two, three hours you have to, no matter how bad your day was at work or how sick you're feeling and, and show up and take part. And I think that means we do more role playing than we might otherwise. Yeah. I like that because two things is like, first you guys have the constitution of a horse, man. You guys run like every friggin' week. And I'd like, I've told Andrew this. I'm like, if I had to run a game every week, I think I'd be a shell of a man by the end of it. Just cause I'm like one of those people when I'm done storytelling, I just have to have like two or three days to recuperate. You know what I mean? Before I can even start thinking about another game. So kudos to you guys. But also one, one thing that, uh, cause I've jumped on a couple of your guys' Twitch streams. And one thing that I've noticed is that you guys have a real core loyal following who's there you know what i mean watching every time that you guys have a game going on and i would say would i be incorrect in the assumption that twitch pretty much filters out the assholes who just say negative shit you know what i mean and are basically uh kind of just the, like you said people know what they're getting when they go on twitch so the people who are on twitch wanting to watch games you know what i mean you're not having to worry about randos jumping in there and kind of being disruptive because these are people who are specifically trying to find tabletop games you know with people playing tabletop and such yeah, I mean, there's there's a whole community just for it, and that's that's awesome. And that community as a whole is is very supportive, and we try to you know do our part as well. Anytime um, I answer a lot of questions in Twitch chat about what do you use to stream, how do you guys make your overlays, um, how do you do this stuff, which you know I know is one of the things we're going to talk about here in a little bit, but so I won't go into it too much now. But um, the probably the worst thing we get is this isn't D and D, which is if I had a criticism of Twitch, <laughs> it's that the D and D is a catch all for tabletop, and that's that kind of sucks. But like we we recently made the switch to the D and D tag, and our viewership has increased a lot. Our our stable amount of viewers has gone up to like thirty something at a time, which you know we're in a weird time zone. A lot of our fans watch from across the globe, which I, I love. I love looking at the statistics and the spreadsheets and stuff, but um, it, it's crazy that people do, they show up and they're, they're ready, you know, every day. Like that's, a, we're a part of their life. Just like people used to sit down and watch TV shows. And that's just, you know, even if it's only our small core, you know, of 10, 15 people that are pretty much always show up, it, it's, it's invigorating in like the pure sense of the term. Like you get hype for it to do it. And it's, you know, like I said, you feel bad when you don't show up. And it does self filter. Um, we, we have very little moderating we have to do. Honestly, we don't really have to filter out people. Most people are very respectful. Um, there are a lot of unwritten rules that we have, and I don't know how we've gotten this long without having to write them down. It's almost a miracle. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, and we fully expect that as we grow, you, you run into more problems. So the, the bigger you are, the more flack you're going to catch. And that's, that's okay. All right. Um, so I think that uh, is a good point to jump on, though, like you were saying, with uh, the different types of equipment uh, that you guys use. Uh, what uh, 
when whenever you're you're streaming, you're gonna have to have obviously some more higher quality stuff than like somebody who's just like recording like a podcast. They might just need a decent microphone and that's it. You know, what kind of uh what kind of work goes into just the setup side of things? I mean, <laughs> you can if you take a look, we we've definitely put you know, time and money into increasing, you know, bettering our setup. But when we started, we had just a, a Seal Series headset mic um, and <laughs> a webcam we went out and bought. And we just kind of started rolling. I'm uh, My rig isn't particularly impressive. It's just an i5. Um, I don't even have that multi core, which we're, we're looking to upgrade now as we're doing more and more. But the the thankful thing is compared to say video game streaming, which is very very difficult. Um, if you're interested and you want to do this, you can get into this pretty easily with even a laptop setup, a, a decent like medium grade quote unquote gaming laptop, a webcam and a and a headset mic. You can get into it. But as you grow, you know production value is important, and you want to look good. You take pride in your work. Um, we started upgrading into things like getting an actual mic arm and a shock mount and a pop filter and. Uh, a secondary computer to help do the encoding, the video encoding that goes into um, streaming, which we recently made the jump from. We started at 720 just because the computer, the technology, um, the amount of money we had to expend on this passion of ours. We started at 720 because, I mean, it's just tabletop. You know, no one needs to see our faces perfectly clearly. And in a weird way, uh, the, the higher quality your stream is, the harder it is on your audience as well um, to watch that content. So there's a lot of like pluses and minuses. Like we use high quality audio, but I use medium quality for our video setup um, through OBS, which I, I highly recommend is an amazing free tool um, for broadcasters that everyone uses. The other common one is XSplit. I think it's XSplit. No, there's uh, yeah, exploit. There's there's one out there, but um, I use OBS myself, and you can scale it to what you can do. But I don't wait for the perfect setup. Is one of those things I always advise people, like why, uh, you know, because I've got like the the nice microphone now and all that stuff. But we didn't wait, um, and I don't think other people should either. You know, people come and they appreciate your personality and they appreciate the work and the time you've put into your game, not the technology you bought. And there are streamers who you you can if you watch Twitch. Um, you'll see them pop up. They'll kind of come out of nowhere with really high production quality, high end stuff. And then they die after two or three weeks because the passion wasn't there. The technology was, and no one's watching for your tech. Yeah. That, I mean, amen. You, 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 that's a very valid point uh, about like the slow, like don't think you have to have the grade A set up, you know what I mean? Before you start something, because um, by the way, your voice is super dreamy on your new microphone. I just want to let you know, but I'm just, Thanks. <laughs> but um, before real though, like, it's been like that, at least with my end of things here. You know what I mean? I, like I started with my laptop webcam and then I started, I didn't even have a USB headset. You know what I mean? And then I progressed to one. Not that I have a high class setup at all, but like, don't let it stop you. Let the passion be there, you know, because people are going to see the passion. They're going to realize if you're really there to like share your game or your story like that, or are you there to like come boom and with some big setup and then try to cash in you know i was talking to my buddy brendan carey and shot out full metal rpg we we're talking about the same thing where you know about celebrities who want to get into podcasting and all of a sudden just show up with this like you know what i mean studio sound thing and be like i'm a podcaster and then like a month later they're not around anymore you know what i mean because they realize that the thing that should start a podcast stream twitch whatever content period should be that you want to do it you know what i mean that you should that you should have that that spark in you that that drive to to make you do it so that's a very good point and i i like how you said that don't let it don't let it hold you back if you don't feel like you have the grade a setup because then you're gonna be doing that the, everything in life you shouldn't be that, that just counts with everything in life you know don't well maybe tomorrow when i have this or maybe tomorrow when i have that it's just gonna prolong and procrastinate what you want to do just setting yeah. the bar too high to where you can't actually get in Exactly. I mean, listen, the, the right day is never going to come, okay? Like, the, if you wait for that one good day to start streaming, it doesn't exist. Your first day is going to suck. It's going to go wrong. You're going to be embarrassed. You're going to look back later. Problems. Yeah, I mean, there's going to, I mean, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, we have, that's our joke. Like, it's not a storyteller sphere stream unless there's a technical glitch. Um, And we all yell at the mythical production manager. Well, who the hell does all that? You know, and I, <laughs> I bandwagon right on top of it. Um. And you know what? It's it's a part of our quirks now. And like it's it's odd when a stream goes off without any problems. You know, um it, it actually is kind of weird. And <laughs> that's that's why I, 
you know, even Spirit, you know, she, we get nervous. If you take a break, your first game back, you get nervous. Um, just first time running a session, no one feels like they're ready ever. Um, even the pros out there, you know, they don't, there's that bit of nervousness before you hit live. And then you click that live button and you fall into it. And it, you know, if you have that passion, it's there. It's got you. Follow that. Don't wait for that perfect day. Don't keep restarting your recording. Don't keep doing that. Leave the rough stuff in there. That's going to be your personality. And that's going to be your gauge for growing. Go back and watch those old videos and think, you know, hey, look at how far we came from there and take pride in it. Take pride that you had mistakes and then you made them better. Yeah, definitely, man. Like, like that's like when we ever we do one of our sessions, the thing that I share, like main thing I share is our unedited, you know what I mean? Like here's here's our session that we did. I'll share it the same day, you know, after it formats, like six or seven hours later, and then I'll go make edited versions for people who may not want to watch it. But man, there are people who want to see the gaps and you know what I mean, and the fuck ups and the you know, who want to see it just unfiltered, man. You know what I mean? And and enjoy that. And that and I that's you know, that's really awesome. But you, those are very wise words that you have there. And I'm motivated now, man. You just put a smile <laughs> to my face because I'm like I yeah, I'm my own worst critic and I listen but there's times where i'll listen to our old stuff and i'll be like oh man we've just like you know what i mean yeah no it, it, it's pride take pride in it yeah exactly um, amen and i think it's funny you say that because we did I, for a bit there i was editing out like our breaks that we took where we would just leave the cameras running and we just chat with people we do we do the ask me and ama is asking anything yeah talk about our characters and all that and i was cutting them out for just try, you know, respectful of people's time. It's a big gap of time. And I, I cut them out so that people don't have to sit there and listen to us babble about whatever nonsense. And the overwhelming feedback was stop. Like we want all of that in there. And I just was totally floored by that. Yeah. That's kind of a good segue to my next question. But before that, I got to kind of give props to you guys, because one thing that I've always envied uh, from your crew is your guys's interaction with viewers. You know what I mean? You're, 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 I've always felt that you have very vocal viewers, you know what I mean? And like you look in the, com the comment section, just for the record, most of the time that I view your guys' stuff, it's on YouTube just because of the time that you guys stream. I'm, I got, you know what I mean? You usually have other things going on and stuff like that. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll go check out the YouTube stuff and just, yeah, very vocal viewers and fans and supporters, which is awesome. And I was always like, man, how can we, cause you know, we're not a live stream or whatever, but I'm like, how can I emulate, you know what I mean? And get that same kind of feedback, you know what I mean? And, and interaction that you guys get. And uh andrew for the longest time kept talking about discord 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 and i was like yeah technology i'm old you know what i mean i'm a knuckle dragger <laughs> like yada yada and so i went and checked out your guys's discord which i'm still a member of by the way and i was just blown away like i was just totally blown away by it man i was just like my eyes were open i was like oh these guys are there and they're they're able to talk to these people and interact with them and answer questions and stuff like that you know because i kind of used like twitter but like a lot of people don't go on twitter or whatever and so um it led me and inspired me as as a content creator to, to create our own Discord, you know, because I, I I was totally blown away by by the, the 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 steps that you take and the means that you guys take to really connect to your viewership. So that leads to my next question for those of who are thinking about going on Twitch and running a game on Twitch. What are some tips that you would give to to interact with viewers? I don't mean to sound like cold and distance, but you know what I mean. There are tips and advice I think that can be mm -hmm. given on how to really create that interaction. And uh, what what are some of those tips that you would give? I mean, I, I think the first thing, and this starts before you go live. Um, and this is this is a two way street, um, maybe even a three way intersection. Um, you need to know yourself and like the personality your camera personality think about it you know who are you what are your strengths and who was that going to draw what's that going to draw to your channel and set yourself up for the way that you want to um that you want to interact with an audience there are loud you know crazy yelling and hyper streamers there are much quieter calm streams that people just chill out in um and then Set the standards. You know, your community is going to grow organically and it, you don't get to steer the ship there. Uh, your personality steers the ship, but you don't get to choose. Like, this is how interaction is going to work. Um, we interact with each other and that's, and then we invite people to jump in and we make them a part of our family on Twitch. And that's sort of the way we go about it. You know, we're, we all grew up, you know, nerds and geeks in high school. And of course, <laughs> dating ourselves probably a little bit here, but that was back before video games and everything was cool. You know, that's back when you got bullied for that stuff. Um, so we're a welcoming place about that. And we have 
you know, there are clear no rules. There are clear rules that we just don't allow in, in conversations that we don't like having in our Twitch channel. And, you know, you, you just got to be oh, as cheesy as it sounds. Like, just be honest about who you are. Don't try to lie and pretend that you're, you know, one of these super popular streamers who have these obscene personalities, which, you know, it's fun and it works for them. But if you're not that kind of person, it won't work for you. And you're going to draw the kind of people that are similar to you. Um, you'll find just as a person, you'll respond because we're, we're all people behind the cameras. Um, you respond to people that are like you, like your friends. And the people you respond to more are going to stick around more. And that's why it's important, you know, and then if you don't like something, you tend not to engage with it. And that person will either fall off or, or readjust, you know, they'll soak in the atmosphere and, and kind of get the hang of it. And I mean, it, it's, and this is really no offense, but it's, it's tabletop gaming. There are people out there who just aren't as socially adept. Um, we're lucky with our on-screen crew. They're all awesome and really on board. But not everyone is who comes to our stream and not everyone understands the norms and where to go. We step aside a lot. We chat a lot one-on-one -on -one with our community um, and set expectations correctly. Like, hey, you're, we want you here, you know, but we can't, we, you have to back off on this or this belongs in private messages. Light hand moderation. We, we very rarely, we try not to ban people. We try not to chastise anyone because it's supposed to be an open community. But if you want your comment section or your Twitch stream to be filled with, screaming and, and cursing and, you know, like a fun sort of jab attitude, then you be that kind of person. And you're going to find those kind of people that stick around. And that's what it's going to be. Um, just beware. Once you set a tone, it's very, very difficult to change it. And that's um, actually something that Spirov and I have, and the whole group have kind of fought with, because once you set a tone, it's so easy because we're, our stream is 18 up. Um, so we're, we're a mature audience only stream. And, I don't know how World of Darkness mature audience ended up being so tame. And that's kind of where we ended up with our tone. And it probably is just born out of our uncomfort of the things you have to delve into and, you know, to, to make it darker. And I started, you know, we play with that with the characters. Occasionally we'll have darker episodes, but your tone on stream and in your game is going to make a difference. You know, if you have sex, drugs, rock and roll in your game, you know, and your comment section turns a little dirty, you know why. <laughs> um, whereas if you're you're much lighter and kind of PG-13 version of uh, World of Darkness, you'll have a more PG-13 kind of audience interactions, which is, you know, cool. Yeah, I really liked your uh, comment about kind of just being yourself and kind of remaining grounded, you know, in your interactions with people. Uh, there was a time, this was, man, had to be like a year or two ago, um, where Roll20 ran, ran a mage game. Uh, it's on YouTube. You know, I think they did like 13 episodes. They were just trying to experiment with the system that they hadn't played with before. You know, Mage, for those of you who don't know, Mage 20th is like, a, I'm reading, rereading the book in the process of reading uh, again, which I, I made it a quarter way through. Excellent book, by the way, but it's not an easy book to ingest, not an easy system to, to understand. And these guys not only took a chance by running the game and sharing it online, but it was the first time they ran it and they shared it online, which I think takes some really some guts to do. You know what I mean? And there was a content creator. He's no longer a content creator. His, his YouTube channel shut down, uh, who put this most asinine pompous fucking comment in the, in the, in the, in the YouTube video. I came across it I almost responded, but I stay out of stuff like that usually. And he was like, this is good. My stuff is so much better than this. I don't understand why people are even watching this. And I'm like, whoa, dude, like, we're just playing games online, bro. You know what I mean? We're not making high art here, you know? <laughs> like, calm down, man. Step down from your, you know what I mean? Your podium a little bit and relax. And I like that what you said. Like, like be, you're, we're all grounded here. We're all people playing a game, man. This is some of us are sharing it online, you know? But I think, like you said, some people think they're rock stars in their heads. Not some, and not like there's a lot or whatever. It's a small minority. But you know what I mean? Like, I read that guy's comment. I'm like, who are you, man, to make a comment like that to someone who's not only, like, like I just think it takes some oomph to go ahead and try to do something like that and be like, hey, we're trying a new system here. You know what I mean? And then just be condescending, you know, with envy and stuff like that in the comments. So that's a really good point, man. That's one of those things about being a content creator is that you kind of have to set boundaries, not only for your own group and how you interact with each other, um, but for your audience as well. However you interact with your audience, you kind of have to set like those those boundaries to so you know where you're going to be. And the fact that you guys have that with your group, you know, you know what kind of uh, 
you know each other's comfort zones and what you can work with and how you can interact with your audience. It's a it's a good thing. And being able to uh, kind of cipher out all the uh, the potentially toxic stuff. Yeah, and and that's there are plenty. I mean, Twitch is is well known for toxicity and people being toxic, and a lot of those people pull it in on themselves and it's a good way to get popular um and that's okay like i'm not i'm not smashing anyone for doing it their way um that's but that's why i said just make sure you're in your own comfort zone if you start a twitch stream on some like really outgoing loud personality and that's not you you're gonna fade you're gonna wither it's gonna suck the life out of you and it'll start becoming obvious and once you start that you've your core supporters are who push you forward and if that's who you attract, you're either restarting from somewhere new or you have people coming in who maybe you want to change the tone that it's difficult. So that's, that's why I say just be who you are. Everyone's got good and bad days. Um, and then you're always going to meet, like I said, it's you, especially doing Twitch and especially doing world of darkness who the demographic is older at this point. Um, you are talking an older demographic. I mean, white wolf's working on updating and, I think Twitch streaming is good. Like an older audience to begin with, too. Yeah, and, and tabletop alone is is older, and there's a certain kind of person. So y- you do have to moderate firmly, and it's always nice to have someone. We are a team. Um, we approach this. It's our community. It's not Spears. It's all of us. Um, we we have roles. So I'm I'm generally one of the more firm individual. I only step in when I have to. Hey, this has to stop, or this has to change, or that kind of thing, because I don't. I don't really shy away from conflict or social interactions. I don't get weirded out by that. Um, but I'm also not the best at support and we're a community. And when you have a community, you have people who need support. who are going to have bad days and bad things happen in their life. And we don't ignore them because that's, that's a shitty time to be quiet when you feel like you belong in a group, but that's not my strong point. Um, Spears great at it. And Modi and Elvish are just awesome at doing those sorts of things. And that's, that's what keeps people around. They remember who their friends are. If you start a discord and go radio silent on your own crew, it, you don't be surprised when you don't grow that way and you don't have to grow with a discord. You know, if you value what, like you were saying earlier, if you value that interaction and that feedback, that's great. Go with it. But not everyone who does this, you don't have to have a discord and you don't have to support a community. You can, you know, do you and let people watch as more of a visual thing. Cause you figure we didn't get to interact with TV shows that much until internet forums became a thing. And none of us pretended like our favorite star read the form anyway. <laughs> so what type of uh, general advice that uh, if, you know, people are trying to get started running Twitch uh, things that we haven't covered that uh, you would give to someone who is just trying to get started in doing some tabletop gaming, what uh, just anything that comes to mind that we haven't already talked about. Um, Inkscape is an amazing free tool if you can't afford Illustrator or Photoshop. Uh, Inkscape and GIMP. So Inkscape, GIMP, OBS, uh, that's that's the poor person's holy trinity right there. Uh, stick with those. They'll get you at least up to our production quality as you learn them. Um, that's all we use. We don't own Photoshop still. Um, we also don't own Illustrator. Uh, like we, we do a surprising amount with surprisingly little. So every, if we can do it, you can too. Like I have no art. I don't have an art bone in my body. I am just not, that's, that's not what I'm good at. And there's also a lot of people out there who can help. So reach out, never be afraid to, you know, show up in, you know, the storyteller spirit Twitch and ask me directly. I'm always open or on the discords or your discord. Um, reach out to the community. We all love this. So don't feel like a stranger. Um, and also, when you do it, focus on your game at first. Don't worry about getting big. Don't worry about networking and those sorts of things because we get this a lot and I, I always kind of feel bad, but people like, Hey, I'm starting a game. Can you like shout us out or things like that? And one, that's just a content creator sort of faux pas. You know what I mean? Like you, you grow to a level of mutual respect. You don't show up on someone's channel expecting to be a partner, to be uh, hosted and stuff like that. Get a good game. Um, we we watch all the other World of Darkness Twitch streams that we can. We check them out weekly. Um, we know who else is out there in the community, and we're always keeping an eye out for new players, guest DMs, that kind of stuff. If you focus on you and your game, someone's going to notice. Um, or if you genuinely take part in someone else's community, I mean, that's how I, I learned about this, and here I am. You know, you genu- genuinely take part. Then you ask, hey, can you come over here and help us with this? Most people, I think, are willing to do so if they have the free time. 
but networking is always important. So I think don't, you don't need all the expensive stuff. You don't need the expensive equipment and there's no day better than today to start, you know? Um, but also make sure you run a few pilot games. That's another one. Don't, I, I know some people do don't air your first game Do make them non-canon pilot games to get your own group's chemistry down. Cause that chemistry will carry you so far. Yeah, and once you have that uh, chemistry established, it's a lot easier if you're starting like a new story arc or something like that to just kind of jump in. But that very first one, you you do kind of need to feel things out. Yeah, and you can start in media res. I mean, it's okay. You don't have to have, we all meet up in a tavern. You can if you want to, that's fine. We did that sort of cliche start with our D&D game with Zimbani, and that was almost like a joke because we're, we're all generally pretty good writers. And we're like, nope, that's how we're starting at the old school D&D in a tavern. <laughs> All right, so you guys can find in the description of the podcast and the YouTube video, you'll find links where you can contact and see the ST Spyro crew, their Twitch, their social media. It's all going to be down there, the Discord. Uh, anything else before we cut to our next break, uh, Mr. Cosnark? No, I'm just having this great time. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we're. I love hearing like the perspective different content creators bring to the whole thing, and and um, yeah, man, it's it's very awesome. And uh, all right, so when we come back for uh. To, from our next break, we'll be talking about things that are coming up on our channel. We'll catch you then. High Level Games, the industry's first choice in taking your games to the next level. We are a podcast blog and new media network at highlevelgames.ca. We have blog posts about all of your favorite games going up five days a week and a podcasting network with actual plays and shows that discuss role-playing games with more rolling out all the time. We are on iTunes, Twitch, and YouTube. Find out more information at highlevelgames.ca, a site that certainly isn't controlled by a shadowy board of directors of otherworldly origin. That's highlevelgames.ca. Please, help. They're coming. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome back. So I have just injected cold brew into my veins. I hardline that shit, and I'm ready to talk about what we have going on in our channel or what's been going on for the next month. So recently I just finished the world of darkness, ultimate evil podcast re edits. For those of you who don't know, uh, my big project is going through our podcast versions of our stuff and kind of like re editing it because honestly, a it's easier to edit out some shit um, using audacity on audio than it is on video and B like we talked about earlier, you know, like in your early, in your in your earlier stuff, there's a lot of technical stuff you're picking up that you know, and 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 that you can edit out and make it sound flow better. So yeah, just so if you don't know, World of Darkness Ultimate Evil is a Chronicles of Darkness first edition game that we ran that takes place in 1987, Bismarck, North Dakota, and kind of deals with the satanic panic. But it has it's a game of mortals. That's a game that Andrew here uh, was introduced into our group with. And so if you want to check that out, you can find that at iTunes, SoundCloud, all. The, all those many different podcast apps. If you do happen to enjoy it, leaving a review on iTunes or your preferred app would mean the world. It helps get it exposed more to where people can find it. So that's awesome. We had our session of vanity, Change Lillian Laws Vanity last week. You can find it on the YouTube channel and podcast. <laughs> Andrew can attest this game is becoming like like changeling the emo or what did someone call it real world changeling or some shit it's just a very character driven game because this game is a game like changeling is straight up a game about pain and survival and ptsd and just it's fucking awesome and i'm falling in love with it and i love our interactions with our characters by the way in there andrew i was listening to that when i was editing the podcast i was just like holy cow man people would really probably think we were at each other's throat uh in real yeah. life you know what i mean it's, no, we're it, cool man we're cool it, we're cool yeah 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 listened to this uh this last game session even the one before i might think that chris and i are like hostile to each other no nah. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. And Adam's killing it, man. Adam loves Changeling the Lost, loves the Chronicles of Darkness games, man. And he put a lot of work into it. And man, I'm really impressed like by his his, his, I mean, the way that he handles Charlie, that NPC, I was like, especially like the last hour of the last session, just like the pain that that kid felt, you know, during all that. I'm like, holy shit, like uh, Adam is knocking it out. So if you're listening to Adam, props to you. I know you're probably going to apologize for being so good at it. Like you apologize for everything else, but you're you're, you're rocking it. Uh, next Sunday, the 22nd, we have Twin Cities by Night Dread session two. Man, I fucking am so happy that i'm running this game again i took a year break from it man because i was just like so much shit was drama. going all the drama and, happening 
Yeah, and just like I wanted to try different games, and I was just like, but to come back to that game and come back to it, a with like how much we've grown as a group in the last year, but like just like take the shit that we learned from the Ultimate Evil and War is on Fire, just like that character driven shit, and just coming back into that game. And this is like a story, folks, that honestly, like that I see going for a while. Like I, you know, like the first story arc of Twin Cities by that was like six sessions, and the second was like seven. I don't see this going that short just because of like how we all want to take a deep dive into these characters, man. It was just really fun. And I felt like, like all this year of stuff that I've just taken in from different media and stuff like that. I'm finally getting to show, you know what I mean? Like, and, and like, I'm just really, 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 really happy that we're running that game again. And I was so like relieved, you know, like, like, um, Cosnark said earlier in the last, uh, section where, you know, you come back after a break from a game, you're just nervous, you know what I mean? And you have this anticipation. And when I was done, and Andrew can attest this, very rarely am I done with the, running the session to where I'm like, oh, I'm happy with that. Usually I'm like beating myself up over something. And I always, felt, yeah, always. always. <laughs> like, I could have done this and I should have done this. And man, I, I'm always getting down on yourself. But like, this is, yeah, you're right. You 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 came away from that one um, very positive. It was a good for the followers. Uh, always, always shout out amazing game to your storyteller when they're done. Because I've never heard of a storyteller that doesn't beat themselves up afterwards. Dude, that Make means sure they lot. know how much you love them and how awesome they are for the work they do. We that's awesome. You just made me smile, man, by doing that. Thank you. You made my day. <laughs> I'm just gonna record that and play it over and over, dude. Over <laughs> that's awesome. Um. So yeah, that's next Sunday. Uh. Uh. Adam. B, because we have two Adams, a.k.a. Mitch, should be joining us for that session with this Tremere character, so I'm really happy to introduce him. And then the next Sunday, the 29th, and I'm going to probably toss this over to you, Andrew. Uh, Andrew's going to be running the character creation session for Hunters Hunted 2 Corruption. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, like what the character creation session is going to be like and what people can expect from that? Yeah, um, so for that, I... Uh, see, I... I I have a general like plot in mind, which I'm not going to, you know, delve into at all. But uh, the 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 focus of that uh, session is going to be solidifying all the individual characters, um, and by the end of it, everyone should be able to have like a strong sense of who their character is and what place they uh, have in the world and how they might interact with other characters. And I just kind of want to do this like it's. It, I've seen how, you know, in some some groups, they like, let's all just build a character and show up and we start playing. But I, something that's always worked really well for my group uh, locally is that we, we build our characters together and make it a group exercise because then you can bounce ideas off each other. The whole point is to make, like, from the get-go, I want us all working together to build this story. So that's what we're we're going to kind of aim for for that session is just making these different... Uh, people who have uh, become exposed to uh, the seedy underworld night side of the world of darkness and how they react and how they determine, you know, there's vampires and I have to kill them. Yeah. I, the, the character creation session is something that I wish I would have done. I mean, I did it. I didn't record the ones I did for Twin Cities by night. And we, we did one kind of like on the side, I guess, for world of darkness, but I really felt like when we did that character creation session for Wars on Fire, that really set the tone for the game, even before exactly. like the first session, man. Like that made the Pale Rider pack like right there before like anyone even played their characters. And so when we did that for Vanity, I was really happy we did that for Vanity because I felt like we knew our characters jumping into that. So that is uh that is really awesome. So the people are gonna be playing this, I'll be playing in that game. Adam C, who is the storyteller for Vanity, who played Wayne in Ultimate Evil. And then you got Adam B, who played Mitch and um, Alexi in Ultimate Evil is going to be playing in that. And then we have Tillman. Tillman. Yeah, Tillman, who played uh, who played Richard in, um, in Juarez and who plays in Vanity. Katrina is going to be playing in that. And we all got these crazy characters, man. I'm like so excited. It's like a wide, good wide variety of characters, concepts. We've only heard concepts. We haven't like obviously put dots to paper or anything like that so i'm really excited to play in that and the more i get to play like the more it's like i can just focus on the one game i'm running you know what i mean or the yeah. brian diaries and stuff like that um and then 
I'm thinking next week because I, I kind of when I started the Brian Book Club, and for those of you who don't know, the Brian Book Club where I take like a horror book and I kind of like talk about how you can use it for inspiration to run or play in a World of Darkness game. I was just like knocking those out like every week. I was like, bah, 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 bah. now I'm kind of pulling back uh, a little bit, but I will be probably doing one next week or the week after on uh, my friend Dahmer, the graphic novel that just recently had a movie that came out. I don't want to say too much while I'm going to talk about it, but I'll be doing one on that. And then finally, full circle, May 6th, we're going to be recording the next Brian Diaries where we're going to have David Larkins from the Esoteric Order of Role Players, EOR, great guys. They have, uh, uh, man, they have like any time that I hear David Larkin's name, <laughs> anytime I hear a vampire actual play podcast brought up, EOR is the first group that's brought up, and you always hear good things about David Larkin's storytelling. Yeah. yeah, I recently started listening to their stuff, as I was telling you earlier, before we started recording, uh, and they have some quality content. They have excellent excellent uh content so anyone who's out there looking for uh actual plays that you can listen to uh just podcast style just he he has a great series of games on their channel they also do other things besides just world of darkness you know they have like um uh, uh what is that system um and dragon or something like that yeah they do pen dragon and they have like a horror on the uh, oriental express game that they do and um but they they have a variety of content but their world of darkness stuff is what i've mostly listened to and it's very good so if you're interested at all uh check them out yeah we're going to be talking to them about running games one-on-one because one thing that david larkins is known for with uh his world of darkness games at least is he has three stories i believe where it's just one-on-one storyteller and him and and I kind of feel that's kind of something that shied away from by some people when running World of Darkness games. I've never done it, so I want to hear about advice and tips on how to do this and to make it successful. And I thought, well, let's go to the source of someone who's kind of well known for doing that. And he was gracious enough and awesome enough to to stop on by. And so we'll be talking about that next week. And other than that, that's all we got for stuff coming up. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM. You can find us on Facebook, Twin Cities by Night. You can find us on the Discord, the Discord. I'm talking like an old man, the Discord. And then you can find also other great gameplays and media and content on the White Wolf Game RPG Gameplay and Media Facebook group, where we're almost about to cross over to 2,000 members, which I'm like staring at the counter every day, just waiting for 2,000 to hit because I'm just stupid dumb like that. And I just like have to have like goals to set. And that's one thing that I'm I'm super excited for. Other than that, Starbucks, if you're listening, give me free cold brew and I'll push your cold brew on here for free. Keep listening <laughs> to Black Sabbath. Thank you jo- joining us, Cosnark. I really appreciate it. Again, you're rad. Other than that, everyone, check you all later. Los Angeles metropolitan area is constantly growing and changing. The central district is full of new buildings. The Hollywood and Wilshire districts, once far from downtown, now are part of a which spreads past Beverly Hills and out to the ocean. But why is all this going on in Los Angeles? Why is Los Angeles an exploding city? Dawn Masquerade The Demon's Mirror Thirteen Candles Three Chronicles Running Through the Undead Veins of the City of Angels The Esoteric Order of Roleplayers Actual Play Podcast invites you to drink deeply. Go to eorpodcast.com 
and search the Duets tag to find out more.